What if I told you that hidden in one of the world's most remote valleys, lives a people whose DNA contains the memories of civilizations that vanished 10,000 years ago? A tribe so genetically unique that when scientists first analyzed their blood, they had to rewrite the textbooks on human migration. But here's the thing that'll blow your mind. They're disappearing. And when they're gone, an entire branch of human history dies with them. The strangest part is how we almost never found them at all. Because getting to the Kalash Valleys isn't just difficult, it's borderline suicidal. And yet somehow, these people have been thriving in complete isolation for thousands of years, living a life so different from their neighbors that it seems impossible. Who are they? Where did they come from? And why does their DNA hold secrets that could rewrite human history? To understand one of the world's greatest genetic mysteries, first you have to survive the journey there. Welcome to the Hindu Kush Mountains of northern Pakistan where roads carved into cliff faces claim lives every year. For 12 hours, you'll navigate crumbling bridges and landslides that block the path. But here's what's fascinating about every terrifying mile you travel. Every barrier is another layer of isolation that created the mystery we're about to uncover. It's the same mountains trying to kill you have been protecting something extraordinary for millennia, something that shouldn't exist in the modern world. At the end of this journey, you'll find people who've been hiding in plain sight for thousands of years. People who look like they stepped out of a European fairy tale in the middle of Pakistan. The locals have a theory. For decades, everyone believed it. Scientists, anthropologists, historians, they all bought into the same romantic explanation. But when modern genetic testing finally reached these impossible valleys, everything changed. The results didn't just surprise them, they shattered fundamental assumptions about human migration and genetic diversity. Step into a Kalash village during the Uchul festival, and you'll swear you've traveled through time. While the rest of Pakistan observes conservative, Islamic traditions, the Kalush live by entirely different rules. Women move freely through villages, faces uncovered, choosing their own husbands through courtship. They dance in public, men and women together in celebrations that last for days. Their music echoes through valleys where the call to prayer never sounds, because the Kalash follow gods that Rome forgot. They make wine openly from grapes grown in sacred valleys. They celebrate harvests with rituals that predate Christianity by centuries. Their clothes tell stories in intricate patterns passed down through generations. But here's the question that haunted everyone who encountered them. How did people who look like they stepped out of a Bavarian village end up in the mountains of Pakistan? Many have blue eyes and blonde hair. Fair skin that burns in the thin mountain air. They look more European than many Europeans. It's not just a few individuals. It's a significant portion of their population. For generations, the answer seemed obvious. The Kalash will tell you with absolute certainty, we are the children of Alexander the Great. The story goes that when Alexander's army retreated from India in 326 BCE, some soldiers chose to stay behind. They married local women, settled in these valleys, and over 2,300 years became the Kalesh. Their European features came from Macedonian soldiers preserving ancient Greek traditions, it's a beautiful, romantic story that satisfied everyone for centuries. There's just one problem. When scientists finally tested this theory with modern genetic analysis, they discovered something that changed everything we thought we knew about human history. The Kalash didn't just survive in isolation by accident. It built something far more sophisticated, a fortress not of stone, but of tradition and ritual. A cultural firewall more effective than any physical barrier. At the heart of this system, is the Bashali house, which exists in every Kalash village. When women menstruate or give birth, they retreat here not as punishment, but as protection. The Kalash believe that during these times, women possess power so intense, it could disrupt the cosmic balance of the entire community. While most cultures treat menstruation as shameful, the Kalash recognize it as profound spiritual power. The Bashali house is in a prison, it's a sanctuary where women share knowledge and maintain oral traditions. Men have equally complex rituals purification ceremonies lasting days, elaborate restrictions on cleanliness that make Orthodox Jewish laws look simple. These ancient rules created the most effective genetic isolation system in human history. For thousands of years, the Kalash married within their community because their religious practices made it nearly impossible for outsiders to truly join their society. Converting to Kalash religion meant adopting hundreds of complex rituals and accepting social restrictions. Few outsiders could understand. 
Their geographic isolation made outside contact rare, or cultural isolation made outside marriage even rarer. The result? They unknowingly created the most perfect genetic laboratory in the world, a human population that remained essentially unchanged for thousands of years, while the rest of humanity mixed and migrated. They were guarding a secret lock deep in their DNA that would force scientists to completely rewrite human history. In 2016, researchers from the University of Cambridge collected high-quality DNA, samples from the collage, and subjected them to the most advanced genetic analysis available. The Alexander the Great theory faced its ultimate test. If the collage were really descended from ancient Greeks, their DNA would show specific markers traceable to the Mediterranean region. The technology existed to settle this question. Why chromosome analysis could trace paternal lineages back thousands of years, mitochondrial DNA could reveal maternal ancestry, tosomal DNA could show the complete genetic picture. The results were absolutely, unequivocally, completely definitive. No Mediterranean markers, no Greek genetic signatures, no trace whatsoever of Alexander's armies. The legend that had explained the Kalash for centuries was completely, utterly, fundamentally wrong. But while scientists debunked the Alexander theory, they discovered something else in that DNA. Something nobody expected. Something far more significant than any connection to ancient Greece. The legend was indeed a ghost story, but the science found a real ghost in their DNA. A ghost that had been hiding in the Kalash bloodline for over 10,000 years. What scientists found was far more extraordinary than any legend about Alexander the Great. The Kalwish weren't descendants of a lost army, they were descendants of a lost world. The Kalwish are a genetic island, isolated not just from their neighbors, but from the entire modern world. They re a remnant of an ancient Eurasian population that scientists call the ancient North Eurasians people, who lived across Central Asia more than 10,000 years ago. The rest of humanity mixed and migrated, the Kalish remained genetically frozen in time. They're like a genetic time capsule, preserving the DNA of populations that vanished everywhere else on Earth. These ancient North Eurasians were ghost ancestors of modern Europeans and Asians. Thousands of years ago, they mixed with other populations and spread across continents. Their genetic signature can be found in tiny percentages from Ireland to China. But everywhere else, this ancient DNA got diluted, spread thin across millions of people until it became just a whisper in the genetic record. Everywhere except the Kalash Valleys. Here, protected by geography and tradition, this ancient DNA survived almost unchanged. The Kalash preserved genetic continuity with populations that died out everywhere. Else over 10,000 years ago, the Kalash aren't just unique. They're living archaeological specimens. Their DNA preserves genetic memory of civilizations that vanished before the pyramids were built, before agriculture was invented, before humans learned to write. This discovery provided scientists with something they'd never had. A baseline. A genetic reference point that helped them understand the ancient ancestry of Europe and Asia. The Kalash had broken science by preserving something that shouldn't exist in the modern world. A direct genetic link to the deep past of human civilization. But this raised a terrifying question. If the Kalash are this genetically unique, this scientifically valuable, this historically important, what happens to human knowledge when they disappear? The scientists had found the genetic equivalent of the Library of Alexandria, and it was burning. Today, fewer than 4,000 Kalish people remain in the world. The entire genetic heritage of a 10,000-year-old population could fit in a single sports arena. But the number doesn't tell the real story. The real story is the choice every Kalash child faces. Stay in the valleys. And preserve your culture, but sacrifice education and opportunity. Or leave for the cities, gain access to schools and hospitals, but lose your identity forever. Healthcare is a luxury most Kalash can't afford. The nearest hospital is hours away over treacherous mountain roads. When medical emergencies happen, the isolation that preserved their DNA for millennia becomes a death sentence. So they make the impossible choice. They leave. One by one, the genetic guardians of human history walk away from their posts. Young people who could bridge the ancient and modern worlds become office workers in Karachi, losing their language, traditions, and connection to the genetic treasure they carry, the very success of modern civilization is destroying one of its most precious genetic resources. Tourism discovered the Kalash in the 1960s, bringing money they desperately need but also commercialization. Sacred festivals become photo opportunities. Ancient rituals become performances for outsiders. Religious conversion poses another threat. 
Christian missionaries and Islamic groups offer what traditional culture cannot, schools, medical care, economic opportunities. The price is abandoning everything that makes the Kalash unique. Development brings roads, electricity, and modern conveniences every human deserves. But every new road is another crack in the fortress that preserved the Kalash for millennia. The Pakistani government has designated their valleys as protected areas, trying to balance development with preservation. But how do you preserve a people without destroying what makes them worth preserving? The elders see it all happening, the erosion of everything their ancestors died to protect, a way of life that survived Alexander's armies, Islamic conquests, the British Empire, and the creation of modern Pakistan might not survive the 21st century. The forces that allowed us to discover the genetic treasure of the Kalash are now threatening to destroy it. The roads that let scientists reach the valleys also bring tourists and missionaries. The technology that revealed their genetic uniqueness shows their children what they're missing in the outside world. Every Kalash child who leaves takes a piece of humanity's genetic heritage. Every sacred ritual that becomes a tourist attraction loses spiritual power. Every road that makes the valleys more accessible makes them less unique. We know now they're not the children of Alexander the Great, but something far more precious, the children of the ancient world itself. The last living connection to populations that vanished everywhere else on Earth. But solving that mystery created a new, a more urgent question. In a world that demands connection, can a people whose identity was forged in isolation survive? The Kalash proved that human diversity isn't just about race or culture, it's about genetic stories we carry in ourselves. Biological memories connecting us to our species' deepest past? Their DNA broke science because it revealed unexpected truths. It showed that isolation can preserve treasures that mixing destroys. It proved small populations can carry huge historical significance. It demonstrated that the human story is far more complex than we imagined. But their disappearance might break something even more precious. Our connection to who we really are, where we came from, and what we lost when the modern world swept away the ancient one. The Kalash are more than a people, they are a bridge across time, a genetic link to civilizations that existed before recorded history. They're proof that human diversity is not just beautiful, it's essential. And they're running out of time. The Kalash story isn't just about them, it's about us. It's about what we re-willing to sacrifice for progress, and what we re-willing to preserve for the future. Right now, organizations are working to give the Kalash a third option. Groups like the Kalash Foundation and the Hindakash Conservation Association are building schools that teach both traditional knowledge and modern subjects. They're training local medical workers and creating economic opportunities that don't depend on cultural tourism. But they need our help. They need funding, awareness, and the world to understand what's at stake. If this story moved you, if you believe genetic diversity is worth preserving, then don't just watch, act. Share this video. Support organizations working to preserve Kalash culture while improving their lives. Spread the word about the genetic ghosts of the Hindu Kush, because once they're gone, they're gone forever. And with them, a piece of human history, we can never get back. The Kalash survived for 10,000 years by choosing isolation over integration. Now, they need us to help them survive by choosing preservation over progress. The choice is ours. The time is now. What will we choose to preserve? Thanks for watching.